I'm live. Hi everyone. I'm uh, Walsk. If you if you don't know me, I made Catbag. I play I want to be the guy fan games like this. Uh, the one you're about to see. And the game I'm going to be speedrunning is I want to be the purple zone. There's some complex stuff in it that I'll try to explain but not go like too in depth because I don't want to overload everyone to start out. But yeah, I hope you enjoy this run and I hope it goes well because fan games are always... you never know what, what's gonna happen with speedrunning them. Alright, if you are ready to go on time then the second I enter this portal, we can start it. So, three, two, one, go. So you are this guy, you are the kid. Uh, you have simple movements, it's left, right, shoot, and jump. The controls are left, right, shift, Z. And you want to avoid the, the triangles. Because they are everywhere and they kill you instantly. You may notice that there's no purple in the game. But now there is, because of that insane cutscene. So you have a double jump, and uh, because of the double jump and the tight physics in this game, it allows a lot of really complex and difficult jumps that you can't get in most platformers because a lack of acceleration really changes things. Like when you compare something like this to, I mean, this to something like Meat Boy. Meat Boy, the, the difficulty can only get so hard because uh, once you take acceleration into account, it limits what the player can do a bit. So with this, there's a whole bunch of special pixel techniques and stuff. Oh man, I can't shoot the button. Sick. This game also has traps in it. And, uh, wow, why can't I shoot the button? Thank you. So it's got traps. And, uh,. I'll point some of them out. Most of them I'm going to be skipping anyway, so you won't see a lot of them. But traps are just things that when you're playing through the first time you'll get killed by them. But if you've actually played it a ton like I have, then it's a lot easier. Because you know where everything is and what everything's going to be doing. This save is a bit annoying if you die at the end, because it gets harder every time you shoot the buttons and that means a ton of time is lost if you die on the third time through. Which luckily I did not. That's good. Also, you may notice this is the first screen where it's going to happen. Uh, I touch certain walls to make it easier to do specific jumps. Basically, the kid moves three pixels every single frame, and the game runs at 50 FPS. And by touching specific walls, you can change which pixels the kid stands on. So, like, by default, it would be 0, 3, 6, 9, but when you touch walls, you can make it 1, 4, 7, 10, or uh, 2, 5, 8, 11. That's a simple way of explaining it. If that didn't make sense, I'll try to uh, show it a bit a bit later. But there are three different aligns, so basically if you can count to three, you can calculate aligns. This intro is not bad. This intro segment. Definitely better than it was going in the practice earlier today. I actually first tried the hardest screen. That was, uh, whoops, that's not good.
this is the last screen in the intro section. This is the very last part of it. And then it'll get to, wow, hello? This is what happens when you say it's going well. The uh, next screen, there are three different paths you can take. And those are the three different stages in the game. It starts with an intro stage, then three different stages. One is traps, one is infinite jump, and the other one is gravity switching. And then after that is the final area, which I call the eye cancer area. And you will see why when I get there. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's, it's awful. I'm going to very quickly explain something known as jump cancelling. Might not make sense, but I'm going to explain it anyway, because I'm going to be using it right here. So because you have two shift keys, every single time you release the shift key, the way it's programmed, is it, it cuts your vertical speed in half, I believe, or like 0.7 or something. So by having multiple shift releases in the same frame, because there are two shift keys, you can you can release them both twice, or you could use rebinds to even do more than that. It makes you fall faster, and you can do a jump shorter than you would normally be able to do. So that's what I was doing there. You love eye cancer? That's good. I hope everyone loves it as much as he does. Oh, good death. Mmm. Mmm. Love it. Oh, man. Another really bad screen to die on because of how long the save is. That's okay, because still the worst save to die on is in the infinite jump area. And if I don't die there, then I'll be at least a little bit happy. next screen is going to be the last screen in the traps area. Uh, it's probably the easiest of the three areas, but there's a lot of memorization because you have to figure out where all the traps are. Oh my god, please. It's the cat bag guy, where? Hi kink. Nice. I did the... Oh! Not nice. This runs a train wreck. I'm not surprised. I was playing much better yesterday, but in practice I, I could basically tell this wasn't going to go as well as I was hoping. I actually PB'd yesterday, but the estimate I gave is, is a little bit uh, forgiving. Okay, first area done. So there's the three items that you get at the end of the section. We're going to head on to the infinite jump area. This one has probably, I would say, the worst save in the game for speedruns is on like fourth screen or so. And uh, you will see why. There are a lot of really bad speedrunning screens because you die and you just lose a ton of time because of how long they are. But this one is by far the worst. So, again, hopefully I don't die to it. But, I don't know, something about the way this is going right now is making me think that I probably will. be skipping this next save not because it is necessary it doesn't save that much time but it's like safe enough that I don't really care it saves a little bit of time so that's good enough for me all right next save is the worst save in the game
woke up just in time to see me. Well, hi. Welcome. Okay, so this is why this next save sucks. You start down here, and every single time you respawn, you have to go through that, and then you have to backtrack through this. So if you die, you have to do that every time. Like this, for example. Also, you may notice that the way I'm mashing when I'm going up that is kind of rhythmic versus fast. And that's because speed is actually not what you want every time. Because the faster you mash, you'll do a lower jump and you'll actually go slower than if you were to do specific height jumps all the way up very quickly. So that's what I was doing. I was doing specific height the whole way. Nice. That's also very difficult save, so that's out of the way. This screen has a nice funny trap on the next save. Basically because uh, these, these squares give you infinite jump, this next one is going to take it away with the trap there, so now you just have a double jump and you fall down and it gives infinite jump back. There's also a mini spike right there that kills basically everyone who plays this game, because it's so impossible to see. And even though I mentioned it, you probably didn't even see it. Alright, area 2 done. Now onto the last one. This is my favorite. It's also very difficult, because it's got upside down gravity now. And every time you shoot the button, it'll swap which way you're uh, falling. It also gives you your double jump back, which makes some of the stuff a bit easier, because a lot of the time when you flip gravity, it wouldn't give you double jump. Oh my god, I first tried that. That's one of the hardest saves in the area. That's a good feeling. It's not a long save, so dying there isn't too bad. But like, the fact that I even did it that quickly is, is good. It was a fun save. Oh, okay, I almost ran into that spike. There's a skip here that I discovered while watching my friend play this on a dance pad. Because I noticed he went a path I normally don't, and it it made me find another path, which is just... You can just jump straight over and skip that whole save. But dying there happens, unfortunately, too much. Because it's a it's a somewhat difficult jump to end on. So I find myself dying there quite a few times. I figure the more I do it, the better I'll get. But as of right now, it's just kind of like a it saves about ten seconds off normal the normal way. Wow, I totally hit jump. Let's see how many times I can die to this. Already at three. Oh, four. Awesome. If I die one more time, I'm just going to take the safety save because this is irritating. Dude. Alright. Alright. I'm taking the save. Whoops. At most, I usually die to that like twice. Generally, it's just once. And if things are going well, then I don't die at all. But, uh. What can you do? So, this is the intended way to do it, which is a lot safer, but, uh, it's slower. And this is a speedrun. We want to go fast. Relatively. Here's a really weird thing. At the end of this uh, this save, it's a little unclear what you're supposed to do. You just fall in this block and then it pushes you through. 
I don't really know why they decided to do that. So next screen is the last in this area. Oh, first try. Easy. That was actually the hardest save for me in my first playthrough when I was first playing this game. So there's a trap here. This uh, this tube in the middle. If you go down there you get trapped. You get stuck and you can't move. So we're just going to head past that. And now we are into the eye cancer area. So it's not like flashing lights and stuff unlike this transition. But yeah, might be a little hard to follow everything. I actually used to wear computer glasses when I would do this area, just because it was so awful. Oh man. I don't know why they decided this background would be a good idea. Please. Oh man, everything's going wrong. Alright, so we're going to do a skip here. Normally you would go to the right and down and hit the save. But you can actually just go straight past it and jump up to here. Oh my god. die here? Oh no, of course not. I gotta die. This is a train wreck. Sorry if I'm not talking much, I'm trying to uh, focus mode at least a little bit, since this is the hardest area in the game. Also this area has another one of those long irritating saves that just like if you die at the end you have to wait forever. There's a trap here that we skip just by jumping over there. There's also a spike in the ground that luckily I didn't die to. I have a habit of dying to that one because it's just a, a tight jump. Whoa. Now this is the second to last jump again. Second to last game. I, words. Second to last screen. So there's an interesting thing here. You'll see a spike at the bottom in the middle. Generally people jump because they think it'll kill you, but it doesn't actually kill you, so you can just ride along. These are known as 16 pixel gaps. They are two frame perfect, meaning you have two different frames you can get through them. I was wrong, that was not the second to last screen. This is the second to last screen. This trap, if you keep running all the way to the side, there is now a, a, an invisible block there. So you'll run into it and get killed by the cherry, which is hilarious. Alright, and now we are on to the save that could waste quite a bit of time. Because every single time you die, you have to wait for it to go up before it goes down. Oh boy. This game is not very speedrun friendly, but it's a fun, it's a very fun fan game. It's one of my favorites, so that's why I run it. Okay. If 
you go fast enough, you can just get right back onto the elevator and keep going. Uh, 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 I knew I was going to miss the jump, so I tried avoiding the spike and, and going back, but I held right at the wrong time. It screwed me over. Again, luckily my estimate is forgiving, because this is going quite badly. Hello? What? Oh boy. This is actually worse than I expected this save to go. Alright, at least I didn't die the last jump. That's that's a silver lining. So now we're on to the, the last and only boss. Which is pretty easy outside of this attack, which uh, it's very difficult to read because the cherries kind of like stop and then choose a random speed and direction. But I got good RNG there, so... I should be getting underestimate, no problem. Because Mewtwo is actually the easiest one. Mew is much harder than Mewtwo. Toho? Psh. Nah. There are some Toho-inspired elements in these games. And get ready on time. There we go, time. Alright, that was about 21.30, which my estimate was uh, 22 minutes, so I'll take it. It wasn't a good run, but uh, my PB is, is now 18.10 as of yesterday. So it was by no means a good game, uh, a good run, but it was good enough. Underestimate is good enough. And I'm going to do something fun that I like to do on my stream, which is... You guys have to guess how many deaths you think it was throughout the whole game. How many times do you think I died? Whoever is closest gets uh, a complimentary cat bag spam in chat. Just for you. Hi. Hi, buddy. I'm all right. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank you very much. Oh, now the uh, deaths are coming up. Uh, now people are guessing. There we go. Oh, they're guessing. Twenty-five, fifty-two, fifty. Forty-three, fifteen. <coughs> I would roughly say like twenty. Twenty. All right. It'll take me to a screen with a portal, and then I can go to the main menu, and it'll be the third column. So right there. Uh, it's a little hard to read, but that says 89 deaths, which means it was more than everyone was expecting. Uh, Alright. I yeah. have just one question. Hi. Why did you decide to run... I want to be the purple zone, or how did you get into speedrunning these? I want to be the boshy kind of games. Um, the more you play them, the better you get at them, and then uh, you'll find it's just like like normal games, like uh, people who run Ocarina of Time or something. It's it's they want to speedrun because they want to relive it. They want to go fast, play something they've already enjoyed, and this is one of my favorite fan games. So, just by playing these a lot, you get better, and then it's a lot easier to go quickly. Most of them don't have, like, fancy skips and stuff, but occasionally some do, and that makes me even want to run it more. So, what got me into running it is just 
the desire to replay ones I liked. They're fun. It's all about having fun. Yeah. Fun is good. So, you want to do any shoutouts to the community or something? Yes. Uh, I am on a Twitch team called the Wannabes, which is a team of people who play these games. Um, I'm going to throw their link in chat in just a second. Basically, it's just a ton of people who play I Want to Be the Guy games, so if you enjoy watching this, then uh, you'll enjoy watching other people play them too, because some of the other people are, are better than I am. Uh, oh man. Hello? <laughs> Sorry. There we go. So weird. Ooh, so that's, no yep, that's the wannabes. Take them out, boys. Let's go. There's actually someone speedrunning uh, one of the hardest fan games. Well, probably the hardest beatable adventure game uh, right now. So that's something. If that's something you're interested in watching, there's a guy doing that on the on the wannabes. Yeah. I missed most of the run, so I did it without me. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because he said 52, he was the closest. Mm hmm. Alright, thank you very much that you've been a part of this marathon. Thank you for having me. Maybe it was, it was if fun. we do another one, we will be a part of it again, if you want to. Yeah, and maybe I can do a. Uh, Wanna be game? Yeah, there's, there's another one that. Again, I, I was choosing between this and running a different fan game, and the other one, if I had more time to de-rust, I would absolutely go with that, because it's got a lot more interesting stuff in it, and it's longer. So, if you were to do it again, I would probably choose that game. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, have a good one, dude. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.